In 2 Timothy 4, 1, 5, Paul provides a solemn charge to Timothy in the presence of God in Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead. He urges Timothy to preach the word persistently, regardless of the circumstances, and to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with great patience and instruction. Paul forewarns that a time will come when people will reject sound doctrine. Instead, driven by their desires, they will surround themselves with teachers who say what they want to hear, rather than what they need to hear. Consequently, they will turn away from the truth and embrace myths and false teachings. Paul advises Timothy to remain vigilant, endure hardships, perform the work of an evangelist, and fully accomplish his ministry. Paul's warning resonates with the state of many modern churches. Today, some congregations focus on entertainment and self-esteem rather than preaching the gospel's hard truths. Many churches aim to make people feel good about themselves, telling them they are wonderful rather than addressing the reality of sin and the need for repentance. As a result, congregations often neglect the fundamental teachings of Christianity, such as sin, salvation, and the necessity of new birth. Instead, they emphasize a prosperity gospel, presenting God as a figure who exists solely to fulfill personal desires and dreams. This deviation from sound doctrine leads people away from the true message of the Bible, which calls for self-examination against the standard of Jesus Christ, not against others. True Christianity recognizes that everyone is a sinner in need of God's grace, a message increasingly rare in contemporary church teachings. It is astounding to see how many churches today are led by false prophets who spread lies and deception, yet they are filled with people. The Bible warns us about this phenomenon, stating that there will come a time when people will not tolerate sound doctrine. Instead, they will seek out teachers who cater to their own desires and tell them what they want to hear 2 Timothy 4.3. This era is now upon us. With the advent of the internet and television, these false prophets can now reach an unprecedented number of people, far exceeding the influence they could have had 200 years ago when they were limited to their writings and local sermons. The sheer scale of their reach today is unparalleled, making the spread of falsehood more widespread than ever before. This proliferation of false teachings is particularly alarming and significant as it marks a clear sign of the times we are living in. What is particularly frightening about this situation is the number of people who have itching ears and flock to these deceptive teachings. Many of them are fully convinced they are true Christians, believing that if they were to die, they would immediately enter the presence of the Lord. However, this is a grave misunderstanding. They are at risk of experiencing a fate similar to that of the rich man in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, as described in Luke 16:22-23. In this parable, the beggar dies and is carried by angels to Abraham's side, while the rich man dies, is buried, and finds himself in torment in hell. This chilling story highlights the rich man's shock upon realizing his dire situation in the afterlife. It serves as a sobering reminder of the eternal consequences of being led astray by false teachings. The stark reality of his torment, as he lifted up his eyes in hell, is a powerful warning to all who might be tempted to follow false prophets instead of adhering to true doctrine. Consider the rich man, engulfed in flames and suffering, suddenly realizing this is not a nightmare from which he can wake. Imagine his desperate attempts to escape or convince himself it's all just a bad dream. However, the brutal truth hits him with unrelenting clarity this torment is his new reality. His fear transforms into profound despair as he comprehends the eternity of his suffering. Once a man of comfort and disregard for others, he now faces perpetual torment, a stark contrast to his former life. This is a dire warning for those who live with itchy ears seeking messages that please rather than the truth. As Hebrews 9.27 states, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment this verse underscores the inevitability of judgment after death, prompting us to reflect on what truly matters. Will it be the teachings that prioritized wealth and self-love, or those that directed us to the living God and a life of holiness? Reflecting on the signs of the end times as detailed in Matthew 24, we are called to open our eyes to the global turmoil. 
The relentless drumbeats of war echo across the world, with nations rising against each other and kingdoms clashing. These conflicts signal the chaos and disarray foretold by Christ. No longer mere whispers, rumors of war have become deafening roars across our airwaves. Alongside the scourge of war, famines ravage vulnerable regions, leaving a trail of despair and death. The apocalyptic imagery of the four horsemen seems to be manifesting in reality. As we witness these catastrophic events, we must ask ourselves if we recognize them as the signs foretold by Christ. These famines are not isolated incidents, but part of a broader narrative that challenges us to see the world through the lens of prophetic revelation. The various forms of suffering we see today are parts of a broader narrative that reflects the deep distress foretold by Christ. Even earthquakes, once seen as rare occurrences, now shake our sense of stability, making our city's emblems of human ingenuity tremble as the earth haves. These seismic events remind us that even our most steadfast structures are vulnerable to the labor pains of a world longing for redemption. These signs should be considered collectively, not in isolation. The Bible does not direct us to expect a single event as the definitive sign of the end times, rather. It guides us to recognize the escalating chaos in our world. Like the pains of childbirth, these disturbances will grow in frequency and intensity heralding the imminent arrival of a new era as creation endures its final throes of renewal. Jesus spoke of these labor pains, revealing a deeper truth beyond the physical manifestations. Just as a woman in labor anticipates the birth of her child, we should understand that these increasing afflictions are precursors to Christ's return. As these signs grow more severe, our vigilance must also increase. We must avoid becoming desensitized to the escalating turmoil around us. Another war should not be dismissed as just another headline, nor another famine merely a statistic, nor another earthquake just a geological event. Each is a solemn signal, each a sign of the impending divine splendor. Thus, we must carefully consider the times and seasons, paying close attention to the biblical prophecies unfolding before us. Wars, rumors of wars, famines, and earthquakes are clear and unmistakable warnings urging us to prepare, to fortify ourselves with faith and truth. For the day is near when the trumpets will sound, and history will reach its divinely ordained culmination. The persecution of the saints is another grave and solemn sign of the end times that we cannot ignore. Jesus explicitly warned of the persecution of believers as a clear indicator of his imminent return. Throughout history, Christians have faced oppression and torment, but as we near the end of the age, this persecution is intensifying echoing the prophetic scriptural warnings with increasing hostility. We must not be deceived into thinking this sign is insignificant. Persecution is often perceived as a relic of the ancient church, something far removed from our modern lives. However, the reality is that Christians around the globe still face severe oppression and affliction, reminiscent of the dire warnings found in the book of Revelation. In certain countries, Practicing one's faith can result in losing basic rights, such as the ability to buy and sell freely, or even the right to live without fear. For these believers, declaring their faith in Christ can lead to violent repercussions, as their testimony is met with intense hostility. These trials are severe and cannot be understated. In some nations, identifying as a Christian is tantamount to wearing a target. Christians there live under constant threat, their existence a defiant stance against regimes and societies that scorn the liberating truth of the gospel. Such hostility towards the message and messengers of Christ highlights the ominous signs of the end times. We must resist the temptation to think that such persecution is confined to distant lands. Its reach is extensive, even infiltrating nations known for their freedoms. The recent assault on a bishop in Australia during a live stream sermon serves as a stark reminder that persecution respects no borders and knows no bounds. This incident is not an isolated event, but a symptom of a broader, growing hostility towards the gospel, reflecting the trials and tribulations prophesied for the last days. Scripture plainly states, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution 2 Timothy 3.12. The persecution of believers is not a question of if, but when and how severe it will be. As the day of the Lord draws nearer, 
we can expect to see an increase in persecution. It will manifest in waves sometimes overt and violent, other times subtle and insidious, but always relentless and increasingly widespread. These times will test the faith of many, purifying it like gold through fire. The courage of the saints during these trials will bear witness to the strength that comes from a power beyond this world, rooted in the promise of Christ's ultimate victory. As we observe the growing hostility towards believers, we are reminded of the endurance and faith required to stand firm in the face of persecution. Let us commit ourselves to remaining steadfast in our faith, supporting one another in prayer, and recalling the words of our Lord, who assured us, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 5.10. The persecution of the saints is not just a warning, but a powerful call to awaken and prepare for the future while holding on to the hope that in Christ, victory is already assured. The church must rise, prepare, and echo the resilience of countless witnesses who have come before us, bearing scars that testify to unyielding faith. This is our mission, our sign, and the critical hour before dawn. The fourth sign is the spread of the gospel. As stated in Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Before Christ returns, the gospel must be spread worldwide. As time inexorably advances towards the culmination of this age, the spread of the gospel stands as a profound sign, a beacon heralding the end. Christ himself declared that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. Witness now as the word pierces the darkness of the furthest corners of the earth, reaching tribes and nations once untouched by the message of salvation. Technology, which often amplifies the voice of iniquity, also serves to propel the gospel at unimaginable speeds. Missions stream into the ether reaching hearts through waves and wires, transcending boundaries and barriers. Even in lands where the gospel's flame is forbidden to burn openly, it flickers and catches, defying opposition. This spread is not merely expansion, it is the fulfillment of an ancient prophecy, the very word of God unfurling like a banner across the heavens. As the gospel reaches the ends of the earth, it signals that the time of reckoning is near. This rapid dissemination does not herald a golden age of earthly peace, but the final act in the drama of this age. Let us then be diligent as bearers of the gospel, knowing our task is urgent, the mission critical, and the eyes of heaven watch as the seeds of the kingdom are sown in ready soil. This sign, the spread of the gospel, is both a mission and a marker, a call to action and a signpost to the end. In its wake, the world will know that the promises of Scripture are true and the return of the Redeemer is at hand. If you found this video enjoyable, please consider liking and sharing it. Additionally, subscribing to this channel will ensure that you receive more updates in the future. Thank you.